Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Lanky, tall, thin person is called lanky. 
like he is stooping. So usually when they are very tall and thin, they stoop. Bend, you know, bend a little. Frowning. Then yeah, how did how is he as how did he get into the uh, army then? That doesn't uh, sound like. Uh, 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 you have to have uh, low weight. Weight should be low. Probably he was. Like he just like it's literally stooping. Doesn't that mean their physique is not that great? Yeah, but then you make your physique after you join there. Okay. So I remember this fellow from my one of my students. He joined army. This was his third attempt or something. And uh, he was always about the uh, whatever their average weight that they required. So he had cleared everything, but only his weight was little more than what was required. And so then he, he lost the yes. yeah. Indian army. Indian army. Yeah. Okay, did. Okay, I remember the first lesson we had in musketry. We stood in an attentive circle while a sergeant, a man as dark as Sorry, a man as dark and sun-dyed as raisins, wearing northwest frontier ribbons, described the mechanism of our service time. Now, if he's talking about northwest frontier, most probably this is uh, British. British. Because northwest frontier is uh, India, right? There's no more. He huh. served in the army during the Second World uh, War. Uh, he's, okay. Yeah, you are seeing decoration showing uh, service in the northwest frontier of in British India. In British India. Oh. Yeah, today a part of modern Pakistan. So. But this is in India. Why so they use English in the Indian Army? No, no, no. This is not about India. This author is British. We this were, author said, is British. Yeah, we were talking. He was probably the ranking American, America. But the author is British, so this is British Army. It is about British Army. Uh, it's about northwest. North, isn't that in Britain? Wouldn't that be like Scotland? No, northwest frontier ribbons. See, it's given there below. Northwest frontier ribbons is decoration. The northwest us. province in British India. Okay, no, I understand. I understand. Uh, the muzzle velocity or speed at which the bird leaves right, so he told us. Is well over 2000 feet per second. A voice interrupted. 2440 feet per second <laughs> was the professor. It was the professor. You know, every class has one such person. Yeah. Most of the times. <laughs> That's right. The sergeant said with enthusiasm, without enthusiasm, and went on lecturing. When he had finished, he asked us questions, and perhaps in the hope of revenge, he turned with his questions again and again to the professor. The only result was to enhance the professor's glory. Technical definitions, the part of a rifle, its use and care, he had them all by heart. Yeah. You have to give it to the professor. He knew everything. He had studied, he had read about it yeah. beforehand and was ready for and the class. The sergeant was very uh, subtle when he asked that. Have you had any training before? <laughs> The sergeant asked, have you had any training before? Yeah. The professor answered, yeah. <laughs> I have a bad habit of taking things apart. I lose everything because of that. Uh, the professor answered the phrase has to become familiar with to all of us. No, sergeant. It's, uh, it's all a matter of uh, intelligent reading. That was our introduction to him. We soon learned more about him. He saw to that. <laughs> that is the best part. You soon learn about more about it. He saw to that. <laughs> that everybody he made sure. <laughs> yeah, he made sure. He meant to get on. He told us. He had the brains. He was sure to get a commission before long. As a first step, he meant to get a strike. So commission become an army officer. Strike is this band indicating rank. Normally so, commission means like a being paid or something. Yes. Now For it something. is now it is exactly. like I commissioned him to make my poetry. Yeah. So that is I'm giving him the work and I'll be paying okay. for it. Yeah. yeah. But here it means to go on your Yeah. So here probably it means. In pursuit of his ambition, he worked hard. We had to give him credit for that. 
He borrowed training manuals and stayed up late at night reading them. He badgered the instructors with questions. He drilled with enthusiasm and on route marches, he was not only miraculously tireless, but infuriated us all with his horrible heartiness. What about a song, chaps? Is not greeted politely at the end of 30 months. His salute at the pay table was a model to behold. When officers were in sight, he would swing his skinny arms and march to the canteen like a guardsman. But uh, my mom might relate to the other soldiers because, like, after a long day of uh, no, like after working at home for a long day, my father often has come so and says, "Like, let's go out and the good restaurants. <laughs> we order tea and the mom gets paid." Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> So these people imagine after marching 30 miles, he is still full of value. <laughs> Let's see his song. <laughs> and everyone else is just very tired. Yeah, others are absolutely tired. And <laughs> the best part is when officers were inside, he would swing his skinny arms oh, and march towards the gang. The minute he would see the officers, he would start marching, even on the road, right? He was like going <laughs> And day in and day out, he lectured to us in his droning, remorseless voice on every aspect of human knowledge. At first, we had a certain respect for him, but soon we lived in terror of his approach. We tried to hit back at him with club cheek, sarcasms, and practical jokes. It was a scarcely noticed, he was too busy working for his time. <laughs> Obviously, nobody likes uh, such people who keep try to give too much information and knowledge and try to show off how great they are and how much they know. Each time one of us. The word droning means restless. Right? Droning, remorseless word. Droning means. Restless. Restless. Droning means a one monotonous tone. A drone has a. Mm, uh, what am I saying? You know, one mood. Some people have a, some no, highs and lows while talking. One monotonous like emotionless. Tone. Yeah, emotionless one monotonous tone. Each time one of us made a mistake, the professor would publicly correct him. Whenever one of us showed, the professor outshone, outshone him. When after a hard morning's work of cleaning out our, our heart, to listen in silence to the orderly's of orderly officer's praise. Press a bit uh, chilly when we turn off the AC. Want to, want to turn off the AC? This won't work, right? Silence to the orderly officer's praise. 
the professor would break out with a ringing dutifully beaming thank you sir and how superior and condescending he was it was always let me show you fellow or no you ruin that your rifle that day old man you know sometimes like when you do a group activity everybody is listening but there are some people who will come for ahead and they tell yes yes thank you we did this we did that or so many times get a lot of pride yeah instead of saying we they also say i i did this i did that so everybody gets very angry and he was also very very condescending you know the meaning of condescending yeah, to matlab sounds he means yeah Like above, you, he viewed himself like above all his peers. Like he yeah. looked down. Down, down, down. Yeah. yeah. He used to pride. Uh, sorry, we used to pride ourselves on aircraft recognition. Once out for a walk, we heard the drone of a plane flying high over us. None, none of us could even see it in the glare of the sun. Without even a glance upward, the professor announced that, of course, is a North American Harvard plane. It can be unmistakably identified by the harsh engine noise due to the high tip speed of the airplane. We could a gang of loud, uh, louds what? like us. What could a gang of louds like us do with a man like that? What is louds? Louds are those uh, uh, unruly boys. You know, in this boys usually like they have this fascination for cars or. Planes, so these they would take pride in recognizing the plane. And then, uh, for the yeah, like, without even looking, looking, okay, he told them exactly what it was, and they were like ready to pounce it on him and beat him up. Yeah, I remember only until then actually. So let's see. Now, as much as I ever forget the drowsy summer afternoon, which was the turning point in the professor's life, he was a spalling content. Contentedly on the warm grass while Corporal Turnbull was taking a lesson on the handgun. Turnbull is such a strange name. Yes, <laughs> Corporal Turnbull was a young man, but he was not a man to be trifled with. He had come back from Dunkirk with all his equipment correct and accounted for, and his kit in his pocket. And the Battle of Dunkirk. is a very very was a very very important battle for a uh, retreat of dunker this is famous as retreat of dunker where is where is dunker dunker is in france so indian and english and french french forces were fighting this is like world war 2 or war world war 2 so english and french forces were fighting the german forces so dunker germany won right dunker of germany won yes yeah. So what had done? German forces had approached. Dunkirk. And they, you remember this tactic that it was given? I think it's, they called it blitzkrieg. If I remember correctly. Blitzkrieg was for uh, bombarding London. What uh, they had done? Uh, they had like some uh, uh, plan to like uh, uh, to uh, go from behind and penetrate through a forest to cut uh, off. Cut off and isolate all of the dead. Majority, yes. the bulk of the French and yes. uh, British troops and then close it down. Yes. So they had almost, you know, covered them threefold. And there was Dunkirk was uh, at the sea, closer to the sea. Yeah. Like there's basically what happened was that uh, in that where, where Germany was invading, there's like a forest in that region where the France and Britain didn't put a lot of troops there because they thought it was naturally impenetrable. And then Germany. Passed through like a two hundred thousand troops through there, and then yes. came uh, 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 came around and uh, cut them off. Yeah, and uh, the, literally the British forces they had to run, run, escape from there. Yeah, and uh, so they would during the night they would take out the ships, even the fishermen, the Britain in Britain, even every fisherman pulled it uh, or you know. Pushed in his boat, a fishing boat, in the late at night to transport the British soldiers from Dunkirk. They were desperately at risk for a battle. Otherwise, British could have lost the uh, Second World War. That was so. Those who managed to come back with all their weapons, all their everything, to back home, were uh, really considered the great ones. What is it? His kitten. Kitten in his pocket. 
That means uh, he had he knew everything. Like he knew how to answer, what to do, and. Uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 He was like all set. He was not. Uh, Control of everything. He was influential. Actually, also another uh, word. I'll read the definition here of Stratford report. It says, talk or act frivolously. What is frivolously? Frivolously, where is it? Okay, yes. trifled with. So, not to be trifled with means you no, are... I don't know that means, but uh, the second part of the list. Okay, act frivolously means frivolous yeah. is. Uh, the way we, um, when you, you know, in Hindi, this is mazak karna. That is to this act. Okay. Uh, to make fun of someone or to. Say so not to be master. Yes, okay. basically. So, frivolous, the meaning of frivolous means to, uh, as I said, mazak karna. Or to take, not take someone seriously. Yeah. That is frivolous act. Okay. Yes. You know how they talk and it's already in the media. That's a frivolous way of talk. So you have to take him seriously. He's an influential person. He has earned his name. He had come back. He had a lot of power as well. Yeah, bank, uh, with all his equipment correct. He was our hero. And we used to tell each other that he was so tough that you could hammer nails into him without him noticing it. The outside of a grenade, as you can see, Corporal Turnbull was saying, is divided up into a large number of fragments to assist segmentation. 44. What's that? The corporal looked over the over his shoulder. 44 segments. The professor beamed at him. The corporal said nothing, but his brow tightened. He opened his mouth to resume. And by the way, corporal. We were all thunderstruck. The professor was speaking again. Shouldn't you have started off with the five characteristics of the grenade? Our instructor at the other camp always used to do that, you know. In the silence that followed, a dark flush stained the tan of the corporal's face. Here, he said at last, you give this lecture. As if afraid to say any more, he tossed the grenade to the professor. Quite unabashed, Private Welch climbed up, climbed to his feet, and with the attitude of a man coming into his worth right, gave us an unexceptionable lecture on the grenade. What an unexceptionable? Unexceptionable means uh, a very ordinary. Exceptionable, exceptionable. Lecture means something. No, exceptional is the exceptional word. Exceptional is the word. No, like, no, exceptional. Unexceptional. No, I think this doesn't, I don't think this means unexceptional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a different word. Unexceptional. Let me check. Because it's a, a, the able of the address. No open to objection or criticism beyond reproach. That is a perfect. Yeah. With all information. What happened there? Fair enough. Uh, I can't read out. It was an answer. What does this mean? What is, what is bro title? What does that mean? Is, is that what is that bro? Yeah. Okay. So he, you can see he was irritated. Okay. He now titled. That means he got irritated. I uh, am. Yeah. The squad listened in a cowed, horrified kind of silence. Corporal Turnbull stood and watched, impassive except for a searching intentness of gaze. When the lecture was finished, he said, Thank you, Private Quelch. Fall in line with the others now. He did not speak again until we had fallen in and were waiting to be dismissed. Then he addressed us. 
and some of you may have heard. He began deliberately. The platoon officer has asked me to nominate one of you for. He paused and looked lingeringly up and down the ranks as if seeking final confirmation of decision. So this was the great moment. Most of us could not help glancing at Private Welch, who stood rigidly to attention and stared straight in front of him with an expression of self-conscious innocence. For permanent cookhouse duties, I have decided that Private Welch is just the man for the job. Of course, it was a joke for days afterwards. A joke and joy to all of us. I remember though, my friend Drover and I were walking about in a few days later. We were returning from the canteen to our own hut. Through the open door, we could see the three cooks standing against the wall as if at bay, and from within came the monotonous beat of a familiar voice. Really? I must protest against this abominable, unscientific and unhygienic method of peeling potatoes. I need to only draw your attention to the sheer waste of vitamin values. We fled. Exactly, kind of a sad. Eh? <laughs> Actually, even I find this is sad. He was such a. Uh, he was a dedicated man, yes, you must say. He, but then the the flaw in your voice. What does impa, impassive mean? Like in the previous stage, corporate term to a student was impassive. Impassive for, without showing any expressions. That not showing that. See, he gave a very he gave a perfect lecture. So he just stood there listening. No expressions. Not by that yeah. was he impressed. Neither was and what is it? Except for searching intentness of ears. So you kept looking at him intently. Other than looking at him intently, there was no expression on his face. Like, what is he trying to do? Why is he standing here? Usually, when a teacher says, "Okay, if you know some, if you know more than me, come stand here." She is not actually inviting you. Yeah, it's like she's, a kind of pseudo threat. Yes, she is basically telling you, "No, shut up. I want to teach up." If you go too much, be there. He thought this called me to give the lecture. He came, stood there, and he told whatever he had learned about the grenades. Now, uh, see, that's what they say. You don't become a doctor by reading things on the internet because there is something. A doctor has something called experience. So the things that the doctor will tell you with experience that you might understand just by reading. Some people they read extensively on uh, Google everything, and they know they think they are half doctors. So that is one. Um, yeah, so like here, basically, um, the corporate had, had, uh, had the more was the more experienced person. Exactly. So he had the information. He did not have the experience. So there, while they are talking about the grenade, the the corporal would have given them the practical flaws and practical uses and practical, you know, advantages, disadvantages of what grenade is, rather than simply talking about what the grenade is made of and what its uses are. The information he just gave the perfect information, but that is not what they needed. Yeah. What they needed there probably was what are the uses, how you use it, what how what mistakes can you make. That is what you learn from your experience. So then the others missed that because he was standing there and trying to show off his. Yeah, you say as a bit arrogant. Yeah. So the basic story that just is he tried to show off too much. And therefore, to put him on his place, he gave him the teaching duty. And then even then, <laughs> he tried to. He was caught in the abomination of the scientific So a person usually does not change so easily. Is this a real true story? Ah. Uh, Quite possible. It's not just fiction. 
It is fiction, yeah. Oh, it is fiction. It is fiction. <laughs> so, it may not be a true story. And it is written by uh, Alexander Barat. So. But he did serve in the army during yeah. the Second World War. That's, that's probably how he was able to. He probably had a similar experience and he yeah. Yeah, yeah, adapted yeah. it into a story. Okay. The professor knew too much. How did he prove himself? Fill in the space with, or should we first do this objectives? Yeah. So then it is easy to. So the first question, do you really know what I, I, the exact things he said, like 30 miles of muscle cars? You have to remember the exact things. About uh, give suitable like, fill in the space about the example. The loud sound of a high flying whisper. Or uh, invisible man. No, you only have to say that he gave the exact or uh, uh, what does it mean high flying invisible airplane? What? High flying invisible aeroplane is the one that which they could not see. No, but that was invisible. No? It was invisible to the eye because it was because of the sun's rays they could not see it. Four uh, A. This is the what do you call the objectives. Private Welch was nicknamed Professor because of his knowledge. knowledge yes. One could hammer nail into corporal, corporal Turnbull without his noticing it because. Ah, yeah, yes. He was a same one. He was a yeah. strong and steady one. Third one, the third one. The office friend drawer fled from the scene as uh, they could not stand. Private Welch exhibited his knowledge. <laughs> The main reason that the professor remained unflinched despite the retaliation of his batchmates was due to the fact that uh, he also got an excellent very very noticed uh, sarcastic comment. Yes. Choose the expression that uses the same literary device as used in the line. He was so tough that he could hammer nails into him without his noticing. The mom made enough food to feed an army last time by Along the walk to the cemetery ground by every morning, the car occurred as a key was a fleet turned in its signature. Lightning danced across the sky. It's A, right? So it's uh, one, right? Yeah, my mom made enough food to feed yeah, an army last night. Exaggeration, yeah. yeah. Read the given an extracts and answer the questions that follow. These are always the North American Howard trainer. Should I give you two minutes to mark the answers? So we will discuss it as well. Okay. Uh, the option address respects the strength of the author, the strength of the professor and the other. Uh, what, if I, I would say that knowledge, uh, wait, what is the difference? Is that a definition of flamboyance? Flamboyance is somebody who likes to show off. So, flamboyance is colorful and show off. So you can say it's both the uh, well, knowledge, fanboy, awareness, awareness, yeah, two, three, three, four. four. Yeah, yeah, B. Option B. The author yeah. refers to himself and his peers as loud to regard the contrast with the processor. Big contrast is there as the daughter. Attention to lack of teamwork, etc. Uh, yeah, so I think it's no, except there is no awareness. No, it's A. It should be yeah. Okay. Access the display. Of uh, yeah, it is uh, in the lines. Uh, what could a uh, gang of glasses do with a man like that? So, compared, uh, yeah. it's a comparison. It should be there. In the silence that followed, a dark flash. I uh, think it's one D. Question one answer. Choose the 
statement that is not true about the depiction of the scene described in the above line. Uh, it says uh, private girls know more about anger, criminals. I think uh, that is true. Trumpu was not someone who that thinks who is really also also true. The entire passage stands also true. Why should they be impressed? They are not really impressed. Why should they be impressed? Trumpu is not. Yes, D. Yes. The silence that follows Quell's remark shows that the entire badge did not know how to react. Did not know how to react, right? Did not uh, know how to react. Did no, I don't think. First one, no. These answers are kind of. Uh, no, I think they should. They should. The correct answer would be just speechless. Or they were even. But they were uh, awestruck and speechless. Yeah. They were like severely stunned by it. Stunned by it, yeah. Yeah. How to react? They did not know how to react. Yeah, like they were speechless and yeah. stunned. Like they did not see it coming. And exactly. They, they were. Uh, they were really stunned by it. Like they didn't know what to do. So I guess it's. See. Uh, See. Yeah. yeah. They were speechless. Basically. The fact that Quelch delivered the lecture when asked to do so shows that he uh, failed to take the hint that the then we felt insulted. Yeah. Yes. So he was kind of oblivious actually. Even despite being so knowledgeable, yes. he was oblivious. Yes, yes. He was so much, you know, there are some people that are self obsessed narcissists. Like they are so much into, I want like, to do this. Like I even want though Quelch might be very smart and knowledgeable, they could still be a very oblivious. Yes. What is the nickname? A specific name given to a person? Yeah, like a, a, a name that is only given to a person. No, like uh, only used by like, uh, close people who are like not an uh, official. What is yours? What? What is your nickname? Because Bengalis are famous for their nicknames. All so at home I'm called uh, uh, Sunny. Sunny? Yeah. Okay. That's my nickname at home. But like, Oh, mm. That's a Bengali nickname. Sunny is definitely not a Bengali. But like, uh, I used to, mm, I have a, I have a bigger brother, so like, uh, mm, that's that's why like for a long time people in my family used to call me Bhai, because my brother is called calls me Bhai. Okay, brother, elder brother calls you Bhai. So Bhai means uh, small brother. small brother in Bengali. Okay. Bhai means small brother. Dada means elder brother. Elder brother. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't know that Dada, yeah, for us also Dada is elder brother, but... Uh, I guess Bhai uh, just means brother in general, yeah. but like, uh, yeah. it would mean like a younger brother if you are elder. Yes, right? yes, that's how it is. <laughs> yeah. But usually they have the words like Vishti and all that. Like I have friends, like they were called one was Vishti, another one was Mittu. So that's what... Uh, my, my brother's nickname is uh, Sonu. Okay. So they are Sonu and Sunny. Can you suggest another one for private wealth? So his name was Professor. Maybe you could say like a star because you always outshone us. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Uh, Private Welch was nicknamed Professor because of his knowledge, no, his habit of sermonizing. His habit of? Sermonizing. It's the fourth option. Right. First one. First, yeah. That would be his habit of sermonizing. What is that? What is sermonizing? Lecture. To give a lecture. Oh. Okay, so it's actually it's actually option number four. Yeah. 
sermonizing means uh, uh, giving a lecture. Lecture. Giving a sermon. Or like giving the lecturing people. Yeah. Sermonizing. Right, so another nickname would, I guess, be, uh, you could, I could, the best, yeah. I can, yeah. the best I can think of is Star, I guess. Because he is the outshine all of his peers, right? So, I think I thought Star. Star, okay. So nickname, if they say nickname like is a, a name given. Like the sun will always shine brighter than all the other planets. So what is nickname? You can say nickname is a name given in addition to the in original name. If, if that's this question is asked. And you can also say that oftentimes the nicknames are only used by a few exclusive uh, 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 group of people being close to the, uh, or like associated with the uh, person. person. Private Welch looked like a professor when the author first met him in the at the training day. Why? He looked like a professor. Yeah. Did he look like a professor? Like physically? And usually they say no. Like he's so being frowning. Yes. Yes. Doesn't frowning mean like a uh, always frowning? So. He was a hot rim spectator. Yeah. So, not a hot rim spectator. Horn rim. You can like a search it. Uh, yeah, you can search horn rim spectacles if you want to see. Spectacles. Why is it called that? Huh. I really don't know. <laughs> Why are they? I guess it looks, it makes you look like a nerd or something. Yeah, yeah. Really. These are the horn rimmed, actually. The long horn. Yeah, 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 I understand. So, uh, when the author first saw him, he was a lanky person, stooping, with stooping, frowning through. Uh, he was he was lanky and stooping, frowning through horn rim spectacles, and therefore he was called. But because of his appearance, he was called a professor. So you can mark that. How will you remember? Alright, you must have Do you happen to have a pencil with you? Pencil? No. Why would I carry a pencil? I can write it. Or you have a book? Take a page and maybe write yeah, it. Yeah, I have a notebook. So just remove a page and if you prefer you can Right there. No, it's my uh, UV, uh, sorry, English uh, book. What is that? Is that your English book? Yeah. Okay. For your children. Private Welch was a thin, tall, stooping man. Yes. Yeah. Private Welch was a thin, tall, oh, stooping man with a frown on his face. Uh, Who's tall? With a frown on his face. He wore peculiar spectacles. He wore peculiar uh, horn rimmed spectacles. Thus, his appearance earned him the nickname of Professor.
What does that do? The, the third question. What does the dark sun bright appearance of the sergeant suggest about him? What does the dark sun bright appearance of the sergeant suggest? Mm, you could say that uh, maybe uh, he um, worked for long hours under the uh, under the uh, hot uh, sun, sun yes. in battle. During battles, during right? Battle. On the frontiers during battle. And yeah, on the frontiers. Not, and his uh, not this frontier ribbons maybe showed his service, the long service that he had put in. So you can see that the sergeant was dark, looked wrinkled. The sergeant was dark and looked wrinkled. Uh, that indicates he was he had put in long service in the most difficult conditions in most difficult conditions likely under a uh, hot climate okay likely under uh, or scorching sun. Scorching under, yeah. Scorching sun. He wore ribbons. He wore ribbons. Which showed his service in the northwest frontier province. It should be which shows. Right? Which shows. Yes. Service in the Northwest Frontier. He had probably spent all his life serving the army. Spent all his life serving the army. All his life. Yeah. Yeah. So we continue this, yeah. and then we'll start with the new one. Huh? Let's not do okay, it. Uh, can you not be able to do it? Not you don't. You haven't managed. Right? Can you not be able to have it? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get this, this and, and then we'll do that. I'll get that, get that book as next time. So to, next time you have to get both the books. Yeah. Uh, I got it today also. I forgot because I thought we'll only do this. And because the question answers are lengthy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. When do you have your exams? That's still time. Uh, no, I might have an idea in September. Oh, so that's that. Yeah. So we need to finish how much before that? Uh, no, I think, need to, uh, no, I think uh, uh, we won't. I think I'm not sure. Okay, fine. I don't know. Okay, fine. Then in my umbrella. Bye. Bye.